What if I told you that I found an Airbnb data tool that will show you visually and easily where the best neighborhoods are in any market across the globe? I have found it. I'm going to share that with you in this video, plus how to use it. And I am going to also share my seven step strategy in how to find that market if you already don't have one in mind. I am Danny and I am the owner of the most profitable Airbnb in the world. It's called the Belmonte Penthouse. I'm being only a little bit facetious there because it does have a cash on cash return of 90%. If you're an investor, you know what that means. If you're not an investor, that is five to nine times better than uh, what most investors would consider great. But here's the catch. I paid all cash. If you're an investor now, you are skeptical uh, because quite frankly, it's an unbelievable number, but it's true. Let's jump into the video. Now I will share my seven step strategy in how I go to identify a market. If you don't want to do the seven step strategy, stick around until the end for a pre-vetted list of profitable properties around the world. Step one is make a conjecture and find at least 25 markets. Now, what I mean by conjecture is I don't want you starting with lists online, top 25 most profitable markets next year. Ignore those lists. Start with your own. It could be anything. Do you think lake houses are profitable or you want a lake house? Maybe it's a house, you know, on the Southern coast. Maybe it's a vacation destination. Just get an idea and then go down that rabbit hole and be open to splintering off into different ideas. That's how you're gonna find the real true profitable markets that no one else is looking at. That's what we wanna go for. Step two, get market data from at least two tools. Now, data is false. That's a topic I've done other videos on. It's in my book. I'm not going to get into it in this video, but you need to offset that risk by comparing data from at least two tools. What you'll notice is the data is totally different. I use three tools. Step three is researching STR laws and regulations for any red flags in that market. Now, my assumption is that most markets, you will be able to operate an Airbnb. Some are more difficult to get that license. Some are easier, but you'll be able to do that. In those markets that is more difficult, well, less people are gonna do that. So that actually could be a good thing if it's doable. But some markets do have some overly excessive rules that maybe you just prefer to not worry about because there are dozens and dozens, hundreds of profitable markets out there. Step four is to do a rental size arbitrage analysis. What we're doing is taking data from the city and we're figuring out what size home is the most profitable. Typically what you'll find is when you go from three bedroom to four bedroom, whatever, you'll have a jump in revenue 100%, 200%. Sometimes 300%. And we know that the cost of a home in this example, when I say three to four bedroom, the cost is not going to go up 200% just adding on a bedroom. So that's an arbitrage opportunity. Step five is what we're covering in this video. And that is to create a profit map to identify where the very specific most profitable areas are. Okay, so now we have a market. Now what do we do? That's step five. We need to zoom it in. Now we know what size of home we want. Now, where do we want that home to be in the market? If you're already familiar with the market, maybe this rule is less useful to you, but I would still do it because you might be surprised in a market that you think you know anyways, that the most profitable zones or additional profitable zones that you didn't realize were even there. Only in step six are we finally reaching out to a real estate agent. Now there's a little dance you have to do here with them. On my Instagram, optimize my Airbnb, I did a short form video content on that. I'm going to expand a little bit here because this is important. Now, a real estate agent wants to sell everybody. They want a commission on everybody, but at the same time, they know, know who they're more likely to sell to. So if you are ready in six months, you say to buy, they're not really interested in you. It's like going to a property manager without a house. They don't know if you're actually going to get a house or if you're actually going to buy in this neighborhood or market or if it's going to be a good house. So you want to let the real estate agent that you know that you're ready to buy right right now, tomorrow, if the right deal is here. But at the same time, you have to communicate to them that you're an experienced real estate investor and you know what you're looking for specifically because if you're a new entrant into a market, the best deals, they're already sourced. OK, so if you're too eager, the real estate agent is going to send you any which property because they think you just want to buy right away. It's a fine balance, a fine line to to walk there. If you have any questions about that concept, comment below and I'll respond to you there. Step seven, after we've done all of this work, is to verify the numbers on that specific property. You want the property to be an easy decision. Yes, this is an easy decision. I'm going to make money with this. How do we get there? Is three ways. Okay, number one, you're going to run the numbers in a spreadsheet. You can type that online cash flow Airbnb spreadsheet online. I have a program where I share this is a bonus product that you'll get with lifetime access to that program. I'll put a link to it in the description if you'd like. You also get access to my list of 
of, I think I'm at over 200 properties in the USA that I have analyzed for my next purchase. The other thing you want to do to make sure in step seven that you're, that it's an easy yes deal is what is your differentiating factor? The design different? Do you have different amenities? What is it that differentiates you from your competition easily and obviously differentiates you? The third thing is what are you going to do immediately that you can do to increase rent. That could be something as simple as increasing the occupancy from four to eight. Prior owner, let's say had four. You're gonna do eight if it's an existing Airbnb. Or you're gonna add a, be as complex as adding a pool or a hot tub or landscaping, okay? Or pictures, if it's an existing Airbnb, that current Airbnb has bad pictures. That, that's the easiest situation if it's an existing Airbnb. That's less likely though to happen. Let's dive in, shall we? Now the tool in question is the market dashboard from Price Labs. If you sign up to Price Labs and I have a code, I think it's optimized, I'll put it in the description, where you'll get a month free plus, I think $10 off your first bill. Plus you're gonna get two, I think, credits to this market dashboard for free included with your subscription. So if we create dashboard, it's very easy. You have to, you do have to have a street address. So whatever market you're interested in, just zoom in and take any street address that's kind of in the middle of that market. City, zip code, country, radius. And then if you click continue, you're gonna get a map. They're just gonna show, show you, okay, if you did, it's in kilometers, by the way. So you have to do that conversion. 1.6 kilometers per mile. So if you do five kilometers, that's the size of a small city. So it'll show you, you can confirm that. If not, go back. Now they charge by listing. So if you have less than a thousand listings, it's $9.99 per month. If it's up to 5,000, it's it's uh, ten it's $20 per month. And I honestly don't know what it is for 5,000. You're not gonna really get into that too often, except in what I call discovered zones, which we kind of want to avoid. Now, while this is loading, what this map is gonna show us is where the most profitable Airbnbs are wherever you have zoned in the map. Here is the market in question. If we zoom in, I have it at 10 kilometers. So it's even taking into, into consideration um, cities around here. Okay, red is, red is good, green is not good. Okay, um, do you see what I see? Where would you invest if you were looking at this city? I see quite clearly that right around here in this lake, whatever this is, that's where the most red dots are. You also see some other places, which is great. I see maybe three right here, but this is where I'm gonna focus on first. You'll notice up, up here, we are doing a comp set. What I'm showing is the whole Airbnb market. Now, I know that more profitable Airbnbs are larger, three, four, five, even eight, nine bedrooms. So let's create our own comp set. Let's just get a little extreme and let's look at seven plus bedrooms. Okay, we've got only 13 listings. So let's see, let's see what that looks like. You've got to select all, create a name, generate comp set, confirm, go up here back to the view comp sets, select it, apply filter, a lot of clicking, but it's okay. So this data will update and the map, which is what I'm most curious is going to update. Okay, so it looks like we got maybe two over here, but we also have one up here. But you know what? I'm seeing something. So take a look at this chart. I'm seeing zero review count, a review count of zero. And they are looking revenue past during the updates at 600,000. So there is a thing called bad data on all of these data tools. So this indeed has zero reviews, so I'm not relying on it. And that brings up a good point. Let's add a filter, which filters out all listings with less than uh, 10, let's say, reviews. Don't be freaked out here. Price Labs is not filtering out anything that you didn't want filtered out. Okay, but we do want, so all this is saying is the maximum reviews in this data set that nine or 11 I had was 73. So I wanna change that zero to 10. So we're going from 11 to eight. And when I click apply filter, that one should disappear. All right, that one does disappear. This map is very restricted. Actually, it's too restricted, I think. So let's create a bigger map. This is the same market that I was looking at earlier. I have just zoomed out. We're now at 50 kilometers. If you're looking at the Smoky Mountains, the Poconos, Texas Hill Country, the Florida Panhandle, the beaches there, and you're not sure exactly where to go, this tool you can use. Now, what I want to do though, what we're looking at now is all of the listings, including private rooms. Let's clean up this list 
And what I'm going to do is I'm going to filter it by four, five, and six bedroom homes because seven, eight, nine, maybe out of my budget, that might be too big. And we're going to do a filter of 10 plus reviews. So inactive listings should be deleted. And I am going to raise it up. I'm going to raise it up the price. I want the price to be at 500 or more. So we're only going to see the most profitable Airbnbs. What we're looking for now, we're going to ignore the color coding because I've already raised up the price above 500 bucks. So now what we're gonna look at, do we have a cluster? Is there a, where is the cluster? Because even though, even the green color is still gonna be very highly rated. So we're looking for the cluster of dots, regardless of color, because even the green color, which on this scale is the lower prices. Remember, I filtered the prices to be all high prices. So we're loaded here. Let's see what we got. All right, so I'm seeing two zones. Are we look at the same ones. I'm seeing this zone here. There's probably like 10 in this market. And then this area here, there's probably 20. There's a couple others. They might be outliers. You can go and look into them, but I would start here and here. Now, the thing you want to keep in mind is you can get maybe 1400 bucks a night for these really high priced ones. But does the home cost one and a half million, two and a half million? When we're looking for a profitable Airbnb market, we're all about arbitrage. We already talked about arbitraging the size of the home. Now we're arbitraging the nightly rate compared to the cost of the home. One important metric that I look at is a five-year payback period. That's my maximum. So if I am investing in a home that's $500,000, I want to be making about $100,000 per year. That's gross revenue. I'm also looking at markets that have can achieve the best hosts 90% annual occupancy. So that means I am looking for homes that are about 300 bucks minimum per night. That comes out to 100,000. Realistically, my, my uh, minimum is 350 bucks a night. Those are my requirements. This video sadly is coming to an end. What did you think? Did you like this tool? I found this tool yesterday and I like it so much that I really wanted to share it with you. But let me know in the comments if you want me to d dive deeper on how more specifically I'm using this tool. There's going to be a few videos popping up on screen right now that I have chosen specifically for you. Till next time, happy hosting.